Invited to a wedding but there's a catch. I was so happy to see a wedding invitation in my mailbox. I pulled it out and a little note fell out on an index card. But first, I looked at the invitation. It was truly beautiful and I immediately stuck it to my fridge like the work of art it was. It was addressed to my husband and me and I was beyond excited. I love weddings. I tend to get teary-eyed and smile until my face hurts at the joy of new beginnings and all the love. I was even a wedding singer. That is how much I love them. I picked up the note card and read it. While my husband was invited, I would be in another room helping to babysit all the children there with several other female invitees. There is a special room for children at the church, and that is where I would be for everything. I would still need to dress for a wedding in case I wind up in any photos, but I would be taking my reception meal with the children and would be with all the kids for the ceremony. Then there was a link for their gift registry. Oh, and the meals for my husband and me would be $100 each, and we have a link to pay it when we digitally RSVP. The first problem here is that I am disabled at 50 years old. Legally, I use oxygen. I use a walker when I need to walk long distances. I sometimes have to give up the walker entirely and use a wheelchair. I am not proud of it, but there it is. I could happily sit in a room and look at kids, but I would be pretty useless to prevent a fall or stop a child from choking or anything else that would require me to move quickly. Second, my husband is not the one who has been friends with these people since childhood. Why would he be invited to watch the ceremony and be part of the reception but not me? My husband said he would happily watch the kids and let me attend the wedding and reception, but the invitation specified that only other female invitees would be watching the kids, so I doubt they would let him. Is this a normal thing at weddings now? Do you pick guests to babysit other guests' children? Should I call them up and explain my health situation even though they already know it and visit me during my multiple hospitalizations a year? I hate having to pull the health card, but honestly, what were they thinking? I confess that I feel offended and hurt that I am nothing more than a babysitter to them who is expected to pay for my supper and babysit for free. Would I be wrong to simply tell them we will not be able to attend and to find another sitter? And if we do not go, do we still send a gift? Update 1. I spoke to my friend, the mother of the bride, and I am pretty upset. I have been bawling for most of the day. She called and said they were getting a lot of backlash from the wedding guests. No one wants to pay $100 for dinner, and only three of the women asked were okay with babysitting. I told her I understood that the guests were upset because it is just tacky to first be asked to pay and second be told you are invited but only to babysit. I told her I would not be a babysitter. At all. No. Just no. She got mad and brought up how we were lifelong friends. She said I would be helping them more by babysitting than by simply sitting in a pew watching. I reminded her that I could not physically help at all due to, you know, being legally disabled. She said they completely understood that and expected me to simply supervise the other sitters since they trusted me most. Again, I told her that I felt it was insulting to be voluntold, thanks, Reddit for that word, that I would be babysitting and that I had no desire to do that, especially not dressed in formal wear. Then we got to the truth. She said that she did not know if I would be in a wheelchair that day or require a walker. That is fair. I do not always know which one I will need. She said they wanted everyone in pews for the wedding video and me sitting in a wheelchair would make me stick out and ruin the video and photos. I said, if I need a wheelchair that day, then I can move to a pew, and my husband can put the wheelchair in another room or back in our car. I may not even need it that day. Then she says, well, space is limited in the pews. You would take up the space of two people with your purse and oxygen tank. I said, no, I would not. I would not bring a purse in, and the oxygen tank either sits on my lap or between my feet. It is like a little backpack. Then she said, well, having you in oxygen in the photos would be distracting from the other people. And there you have it. Words were exchanged, and she hung up on me. I have not been removed from any social media yet, but I fully expect to be. I already feel awful for being this way at only 50 years old. I did not choose this. I did not want this. If she thinks it is awful to have it photographed, just imagine living with it. Which is what I told her before she hung up on me. I am devastated. Just devastated. Update 2. I am not in the greatest headspace. I do not think I have ever been less okay. Honestly. I did not register to RSVP or communicate with them further until another invitee got in touch with me and said that the mother of the bride, a person I thought of as basically my sister, was bad-mouthing me into the ground. I explained my side, and our mutual friend was livid. They told the mother of the bride and the bride that they were wrong to want to exclude me because I might or might not need a wheelchair and would have oxygen on my face. I could remove the oxygen for photos, they told her. So, the mother of the bride sent me a message saying, and I quote, Well, if you are going to be butthurt about the aesthetic we want to achieve and try to turn other guests against us, then you can come and sit in a pew. But not in photos and we will try to get the videographer to do edits to the wedding video, too. But I will not forget how you made this difficult for us. I replied, How did I make it difficult other than existing? She replied, You clearly told about what I told you regarding your wheelchair and oxygen, and she is telling everyone else. We are getting a ton of hate. I said, She asked me if I was attending, and I told her no and explained why. I did not lie to her. I told her exactly what you said. You did not tell me not to tell anyone your reasons. If they are valid reasons to you, then you should not care who knows. So I am now blocked. 
by the bride, the mom, the dad, and the groom. A friendship I have had my entire life is over. A goddaughter that I helped nurture and care for is just gone now. We paid for the bride's car insurance, gas, and cell phone all through high school and college because we wanted her focused on just her studies and not a part-time job, her parents got her a car but insisted she work. But her grades fell when she did and we helped her. And this is how they thank us. This is how they repay our kindness. I guess I am a great friend when I am giving money, but I am not good enough to be seen. I have felt like a burden my whole life, and this has set me back so far. I am just not okay. Parents changed their mind on attending my high school graduation after my church announced their own in two weeks, and they want me to attend that instead. So I am writing this because my college plans were uprooted as of Sunday, June 16th. I will be graduating this week, and my ceremony is later this week. However, my church announced that they will be doing their own graduation ceremony on July 7th, where they will have church graduates walk down the aisle of the sanctuary during service to be recognized and receive prayer. The pastor announced it on the 16th. According to my parents, he said it was important to make sure the next generation rooted their future in God, and the church will be having a barbecue after the service in honor of the graduates. However, I have not attended church since I was 16 due to an incident I will explain later, but my parents seem determined to make sure I attend not just the church graduation but church from now on too, and they added strings to prior agreements that were never attached. Before the church graduation was announced, my parents agreed to split tuition with me to attend a community college upon me finding a job this summer. I planned to transfer afterward to finish my bachelor's. However, after the announcement, my parents said they were not going to attend my graduation and that I was not allowed to either, a complete turnaround out of nowhere. We even invited relatives to attend from out of state, but my parents already told them to attend the church graduation instead, and I feel like they pulled the rug from under me. When I said I still planned to attend my high school graduation with friends, they threatened to rescind their offer to pay for college if I went and did not come to the church one, and I just feel blindsided by this. When I tried to explain how they changed their mind out of nowhere, they said that the pastor talked about how people lost their way in college by disregarding faith and morals, so they were not going to pay for me to go and change because of worldly influences. But when I said that I would pay for tuition myself, without them if I find a job, while still attending the high school graduation, they said they would charge me rent starting in July, which is unfair because I am yet to find a job. I have been applying like crazy the past few weeks, and I have a few interviews lined up too. They are just trying to make me return to church, after I stopped attending two years ago, and I have been really frustrated with their flip-flop. They said they are doing this because they made mistakes in college before later finding God, and they did not want me to make the same ones too. The last thing I will add is this. I was bullied in that church in the past, and I reached my breaking point two years ago. The youth had a camp out on the grass behind the church where I was hazed by this really annoying girl, and no one did anything, including the assistant slash chaperone in our tent. There were stupid pranks that were made in good fun, but the most hurtful thing was when that one girl made jokes and comments about my body and weight when we were changing that really hurt, and our tent chaperone did not do anything when I told her afterward because she was not in there as we changed. This is just one of many things with this girl during youth group when leaders were not looking, but that was the most hurtful. However, to my surprise, my parents took my side and did not make me attend youth group after that, and they let me stop attending for the most part to my surprise. I miss how they were reasonable in the past and hope that they can be reasonable again with me here. Most of my relatives are also churchgoers and have agreed to attend the church graduation instead, and I just need advice because it all happened so fast, and it especially hurts that they do not want to attend my high school graduation. My friends are in high school and I do not consider anyone in our church's youth group to be my friend, so of course, I want to graduate with my friends, but I cannot pay rent. Update. I was unable to update sooner due to my phone being taken away, but I will explain why. A few people suggested reaching out to some non-religious relatives to see if they could help or even provide shelter if they tried to throw me out, and I decided on my aunt after having no success with friends. I told some friends first about everything my parents threatened. But long story short, they talked to their parents who were unable to take me in, and they said it was last minute or mostly busy with their own things and graduations too. I then tried my aunt and told her everything too, and she said I could stay with her soon, but not in time for my high school graduation because it was really short notice. She said I could at some point this summer, and she was not initially coming to my graduation because she lives on the other side of the country. But she said she would try to talk some sense into my parents, and that led to my phone being removed. My parents did not like that I told her because it was none of her business, according to them. I do not know what was said on the call and they threatened to turn off my phone plan unless I gave them my phone, and I caved when they were yelling at me and gave it to them, along with my laptop they wanted too, because they threatened to kick me out sooner than July for talking about them to my aunt because she could tell others. They also said that they would put my stuff outside while I was at the high school graduation if I attended. So they would kick me out that night instead of their original threat to start charging me rent in July. So for those reasons, plus another I will say in a moment, I decided not to attend my high school graduation because I would not be able to enjoy it. I was already having anxiety about what they would do to my stuff while there, and I did not want to be homeless when I returned. I also had a loss of motivation to do other things leading up to it, hobbies like sports, hanging out, or even watching television. I knew I would not enjoy it because I was already dreading it before it happened, and my anxiety there would be worse than the lead-up. I also did not want to wear a smile the whole time with none of my family in attendance either, 
and I did not think I could hide it emotionally either. I also decided to attend the church graduation to get it over with, and I rationalized it like I did with other things growing up. I was forced to go to youth group and kids choir growing up, and I was forced to be baptized too. This was no different, just five minutes, minutes of the pastor calling all graduates on stage to pray for them, and they did not even give us a gift like on Mother's Day. All my life, I have had to endure things I hated at church, and the church graduation was less tedious than the pre-baptism classes, they were mandatory, because it was only five minutes on stage compared to three weeks of baptism classes. Some relatives came, gave me money from cards, and we ate lunch at a restaurant afterward, something we did when my dad was elected to a church position years ago and invited friends to see him get installed before lunch afterward. I am pretty used to the song and dance, and this was easier and shorter than other church nonsense. My parents also returned my phone after the church graduation, and a lot of my anxiety lessened when I decided to skip my graduation. Do not get me wrong, I will always hate them for it, and I am no longer accepting their help for college either. I am going to find a job, hopefully too, if part-time, and try to move out over the summer if I can, and I will not talk to them again afterward. Because of their stress, I decided to skip a once-in-a-lifetime event to prioritize my mental health because I would not have enjoyed it anyway with the stress. And the fact that they are happy with me for obeying as they gave my phone back should allow me to find jobs without additional stress. They also withdrew their July rent threat and everything has been peaceful since the church graduation, although I will never forgive them for what they tried to do. I also expect them to threaten me with something else in the future too. So I hope to move out as soon as possible, even if it means staying with my aunt until finding a job. I am glad she said I could stay with her, and hopefully, the time until I do remains peaceful. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video and want to hear more interesting stories and perspectives, make sure to hit that subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up, and share it with your friends. Don't miss out on more interesting videos. Click the video on your screen to check out my previous interesting content. And I'd love to hear your thoughts, so drop a comment below. See you in the next video.